the diagnosis of Kaposi sarcoma. The diagnosis of classic Kaposi sarcoma is generally suspected based upon the appearance of the characteristic lesions like whether the lesions are purplish, reddish blue or dark brown or black patches or maybe they are categorized based upon the plaques or nodules. Not only that, they are also classified according to their distribution like the presence of these lesions on the skin and most often they are located on the lower extremities. But in general, biopsy is required for definitive diagnosis. So in the exam, if you will see the question which is related to the, the definitive diagnosis or the diagnosis of choice of Kaposi sarcoma, your answer should be the biopsy. So this is what is about the diagnosis of Kaposi sarcoma. Let us discuss about the staging of the Kaposi sarcoma. In contrast to that of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome related Kaposi sarcoma, these days there is no commonly used or universally agreed upon staging system for classic Kaposi sarcoma. TNM staging system which is explained by AJCC for the soft tissue sarcomas of the extremity and trunk specifically excludes Kaposi sarcoma. So given the variable and natural history of the classic Kaposi sarcoma, one group of investigators used their experience with approximately three to 400 cases of classic Kaposi sarcoma to derive a proposed staging system based upon the distribution of the disease and also the clinical pace of progression of the disease lesions. Now we are going to discuss about these stages based upon these investigator results. First we have to discuss about the stage 1. The stage 1 of the Kaposi sarcoma is also called as maculonodular stage. So when we are calling them as macules, these macules are smaller in size and along with there will be a presence of nodules. That is the reason we are calling it as maculonodular stage. So macules and nodules primarily confined to the lower extremities. That is the reason we say that more commonly these lesions are seen or located on the lower extremities which is called as maculonodular stage, stage 1. After the stage 1, the next one is called as the stage 2. The stage 2 is also called as infiltrative stage. In the infiltrative stage, one can mainly find the plaques. So like we see the macules and nodules which are located on the lower extremities, these plaques are also mainly involving the distal part of the lower extremities but sometimes these plaques are also associated with few smaller nodules. Because of the predominance of plaques, this stage 2 is called as plaque stage. And next one is called as the stage 3. The stage 3 is called as the florid stage which means there will be a multiple angiomatous plaques and nodules both are seen together especially these are also involving lower extremities but the classical difference between the plaque stage and stage 3 will be these lesions in the stage 3 are often ulcerated which cannot be seen in the stage 2 and let us talk about the final stage is called as stage 4 which is called as disseminated stage. In the disseminated stage, one can find multiple angiomatous nodules and plaques, but these lesions are extending beyond lower extremities. And these lesions are not confined to the lower extremity only, but they cross beyond the border of the lower extremities. That is the reason we say that this is called as stage 4. But generally when we see these all these stages, 
stage 1 to stage 3 was further subdivided into slow that is group A or rapidly progressive disease is called as group B. So, this is how we classified stage 1, 2, 3 into group A as well as group B. So, group A we already know that the progression is very slow, slower form of the disease. But the group B defined as an increase in the total number of plaques or nodules or in the total area of plaques in the three months following an examination. And remember that all the patients of stage 4 disease were considered to have a rapidly progressive course. So, this is how we classified the stages of the Kaposi sarcoma.